I've had the June hardtop rooftop tent on the new D-Max for a couple of months now, and a lot of you guys have been asking me for a review. So now that I've taken it on a bunch of camping trips, including our two-week adventure through the Pilbara, I feel like I know it well enough to give you guys that review. So here it is. Hey guys, Dan here from Explorebound, and that's the first time ever introducing the channel by its new name, and it feels a little bit weird, not gonna lie. Uh, but today we're taking a look at the June Nomad Deluxe, which is Anaconda's top of the range rooftop tent. It's essentially the big brother to the original soft top June Nomad, which is what I had on the old Ranger for years and absolutely loved. So this new model's got big boots to fill. Starting from the outside, the Nomad Deluxe measures in at 210 centimeters long, 140 centimeters wide, and when it's closed down, it's 28 centimeters tall, and that's without the roof racks installed. Now, that's pretty slim, and it still fits in my garage nice and easily, which I am stoked about, but as far as hard shell rooftop tents are concerned, there are some slightly slimmer models on the market. This one is slightly taller than some others because of the way it opens up in like in two sections, which does give us a bit more internal space as well as a few other benefits, but we'll touch on those shortly. It weighs in at 75 kilograms, which is actually pretty decent for a hard shell rooftop tent. For comparison, the Drifter Wildland 1.4 weighs 65 kilos and the King's Grand Tour weighs 95 kilos. Now, in my opinion, the main benefit of hard shell rooftop tents is just how quick and easy they are to set up and pack away, and the Nomad Deluxe is no exception. So let me quickly pull this down and I'll show you what I mean. To set it up, the first step is to undo these eight latches found around the outside of the tent. You'll notice these left-hand latches are upside down. Normally they're all the same way around. I've just flipped these two on mine to make it easier to access the awning. Once those eight latches are all undone, we just give the back a gentle push until the gas struts take over. Then come around and push the front side up next. Next, grab the ladder out, clip it onto the frame of the tent and extend it to the ground. The last step is just to unclip this elastic cord from inside the tent that pulls the material in when you close it back down again. And just like that, she's all set up. The telescopic ladder it comes with is pretty standard and it works really well. And you can actually mount it anywhere along this rail here. Now for me in the canopy setup, that doesn't really make much difference. But if you're putting this tent on a wagon four wheel drive, it means you can put the ladder back here, for example, and still open the back door of your car. The only real downside I've found about this ladder, and this is the case with all hard shell rooftop tents, you can't actually pack the tent away and store the ladder inside. And that's something I'm really missing from the soft shell model. Anyway, what do you say we uh, jump on inside and find out how comfy she is? Now, I mentioned earlier about that twin folding design, and essentially what that means is because the tent sort of sets up in two stages like this, the walls of the tent are pretty straight up and down, compared to a single hinge system where normally one of the walls is leaning right into the tent. And where that makes the biggest difference is when there's two people sleeping up here, because one person doesn't have the material kind of like leaning across their face while they're trying to sleep. Another benefit to the way this tent sets up is we get windows all the way around the outside of the tent, which is something you don't get if the hardtop just folds to the sides. Personally, I really value that because it's one of my favorite things in life to just wake up in the morning, unzip the tent window and just lay there looking out on a beautiful view. I mean, maybe I'm just lazy and I could get out of the tent to enjoy that same view, but it's just something you don't get with most hard shell rooftop tents. Comfort-wise, the Nomad Deluxe has a 5cm high-density foam mattress, which I presumed was going to be similar to the soft top model, but I was very, very wrong. This mattress is noticeably more comfortable, and I've been sleeping so well on these camping trips. And I've never actually felt support beams underneath through the mattress, which uh, I reckon is pretty surprising considering it's only 5cm. In terms of internal space in the tent, I am 6 foot 2 tall, and I can comfortably sit up pretty much anywhere in this tent, and that's really handy, especially if you're trying to get changed. Changed. Uh, in terms of width, this is the 140 model, so I've got 20 centimeters of extra width compared to my soft top model, and that means two people can fit up here quite comfortably. Lengthways, I can lay down fully, and my feet still have a fair bit of room left before touching that firewall. Inside, we get some handy pockets for storing bits and pieces. 
And one of my favorite features is this built-in LED strip light that you literally just plug into a USB power bank and you've got plenty of light to fill the entire tent. I actually leave this charge bank in the tent when I pack it away so I never have to worry about forgetting it. And being LED, it uses hardly any power. So this charge bank has been going for quite a few camping trips and it's still got three or five bars of charge. On the front of the tent, we get two vents for airflow, which is great, and two heavy duty shoe bags. Now these seem pretty weatherproof, but they are just netting on the back. So if you're camping during some crazy wind that's gonna blow these bags around, I wouldn't count on your shoes staying dry. But for general rain, they should be fine. As for how the tent stands up to windy conditions, last night was actually the first night I've ever camped in this tent during a windy night, and I was really, really impressed. The material didn't seem to flap around much at all, and the whole structure just stood solid as a rock. I think the winds were around 25 to 30 kilometers an hour as a bit of a reference, so not cyclonic, but certainly a windy night. One thing I really loved about my soft top model was that I could pack it away with all my bedding still inside, but I wasn't sure how I was gonna go with this hard shell model because there's, uh, there's less wiggle room with a hard shell rooftop tent. But I was very happy to find out that I could comfortably pack this away with two sheets, a doona and a sleeping bag all inside. And that means when I get to camp, all I have to do is pop the tent up, chuck my pillows in and I'm good to go. Pillows won't fit obviously, but I reckon just leaving the bedding up here is an absolute win. And as for packing the tent away, it's basically just a reverse of the setup procedure. So the first step is to rehook this elastic cord Pull the first half of the tent down using the strap on the rear, making sure no material gets caught while doing so. Then head around the other side and climb up the ladder to pull that side down next. Remember to unclip the ladder and fold in the shoe bags before you close it fully. Once it's all collapsed, I usually just give it a quick walk around to make sure no material is caught in the frame and then do up all the clips. As for mounting it to your vehicle, mine's mounted a little bit custom. We've drilled holes in it and all sorts of things to try and get it nice and flush. So I'll chuck a few clips in here of the factory mounting system back when it was mounted on my old Ranger. Basically, there's two mounting rails in the bottom of the tent with brackets that wrap around your existing roof racks. You can slide these forwards and backwards too to match your roof setup. One downside to having those latches all the way around the outside of the tent is it can make it a bit more challenging to mount things like awnings. Because obviously you have to be able to get in here and undo these latches. I've actually swapped these latches around uh, in terms of turning them top down. So now they undo that way instead of from the bottom on this one side. Now, one thing I have noticed with this rooftop tent is that it seems to use quite a similar shell to some other rooftop tents on the market. And that means that the brackets designed to fit those probably fit this tent as well. I can't confirm that, but I have seen them side by side and they look pretty much identical. The only other thing worth mentioning is that it does come with these two roof racks that are super easy to install and they can support up to 75 kilos. But make sure you keep in mind the dynamic weight rating of your vehicle so you don't have any issues with uh, insurance or, or worse. Uh, not so much of an issue with canopy setups like mine, but definitely something worth thinking about if you're installing this on a wagon four wheel drive. Well, those are my first thoughts on the June Nomad Deluxe rooftop tent from Anaconda. I reckon it's a pretty awesome tent, nice and spacious inside, really comfortable, quick to set up, and at $2,600, it's one of the cheapest hard shell rooftop tents on the market. Durability wise, it's too early to tell, but my old soft top model lasted me for about three years without any issues, so I'm sure this is gonna be a pretty similar story. But I will make a follow up review after I've had it for about a year. I'm also working on another video comparing all the differences between the soft shell and the hard top models. So if you're trying to decide between the two, stay tuned for that coming out soon. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have got any other questions about the tent, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one.